Hi, my name's Tyson and welcome to this training on the One Life Feasibility Program. Now this program is an extensive program uh, and it's a very simple and easy to use one. Now when you first look at the program essentially, uh, it may look a little overwhelming. Though what if I told you that there were only three numbers that made up 85% of the entire feasibility? That makes it a lot simpler, yes? So what we want to do is I'm going to work through this feasibility in two parts. The first part is I'm actually going to work through the different tabs and the different functionalities of the, strate uh, sorry, the feasibility program and how that works. And then the second part is we're actually going to fill in a feasibility very, very quickly, mainly focusing on the three predominant numbers. Okay, so let's head into looking at the tabs. As you open the document, it'll look something a little like this. So you'll see the screen uh, and you'll see lots of different numbers and lots of different words. Where we're going to start is we're actually going to come down the bottom left hand corner here and we're going to go to your research sheet. So we're going to put in today's date um, and let's just say, uh, let's just say it's that for now. You're going to put in the address. Uh, so let's just put in 56 Highfield Drive, whatever it be. Uh, you can put in the agent's details, uh, so Mr. Johns, now you'll obviously fill this in correctly. Uh, the list price, uh, let's just say that they're listing at 440000 Okay, let's look at the land size, let's say it's 410 metres squared. Uh, the zoning, residential A, uh, your estimated value, let's just say I think it's worth more around the $500,000 mark. Okay, so those were all information that you can get from RP data. Okay, so we can research website and RP data. These details you can actually get from the agent. Okay, sorry, right, so the land size is 410, the dwelling size might be 210. Okay, vendor's position, uh, you know, w are they moving away? Are they going to be doing different things? Um, so let's just say moving away for this example. Is it tenanted? No, the owners live in there. Um, if so, what is the rental income? How long has it been on the market? Uh, let's say 136 days. And what are the water rates and what are the land tax? Now this is purely information for you to know, okay? So that's your first sheet, filling that in is very simple and that's the definitely step number one to filling in a successful feasibility. Step number two is actually coming to a checklist. Now this checklist is mainly open for those who are looking at a renovation property. So if this is not you, I'm only going to go through this very, very quickly, but it is important for you to understand which areas that you need to look in order to add extreme value to your property, okay? So what we've done is we've broken it down to exterior and interior. And then we've got a bit of strategy talked out here. Exterior, we're going to look at the fence, the letterbox, the driveway, the dwelling exterior, the roof, so on and so on and so on. And what I want you to do here is put in comments, yes, needs new fence. I want you to put in, uh, yes, needs new letterbox. Okay, so we're going to do that and you just fill this form in and I actually want you to print this off, take it with you when you're going to check out your next property. It's an amazing sheet and was based on lots of research, uh, research of lots of different transactions that we've done but also um, you know some very famous property investors and taking out of their books the best part which the best parts that actually add the most value on a residential property okay so that's what we've done here so what we want to do once you've actually filled that form in it'll actually mean a lot more when we come to that renovations tab but we're going to talk about that a little later so that is your renovations checklist print that off take it with you and fill it in as you go to the property the next page that we actually come to, as I'll move here, is a sale copy. Now what a sale copy means is that if you were to propose this transaction to a builder, then this is what you would give them. A builder understands their build costs, they understand how to make profit. So if, if you had a block of land and you were proposing building houses on it and you didn't have the finance but you thought it would be good for a builder, you could sell that to the builder using the sale copy feasibility. Okay, that's another amazing tab that's on here. Um, we come to the renovations page. Now, we, we were just on the renovations checklist. Now, remember the checklist was broken down into exterior and interior. So what I've done here is actually broken down exterior and interior. Okay, and I've actually put some other ones down here as well. So, we had fence, and yes, we needed new fence. And let's just say that, uh, you know, you need 20... Um, you know, 20 meters of it, and one meter was $200. Uh, 
Okay, these prices you can change, they're all subject to change. But let's just say that it was 10 meters, so your new fence is 10,000 or 2,000. That's a really expensive fence, actually. Uh, so let's put five. You need a new letterbox, so you only want one letterbox unless you want to buy two. Uh, or you could be subdividing the property, you could have two. But so on and so on, you're starting to get the gist. So all of this, you fill in the renovations checklist, then you bring the checklist to the renovations page and you fill this all in accordingly. Okay? And all of this will actually come back to probably the most important page, which is the feasibility page, which is what you can see here. So the feasibility page is made up predominantly, like I said, 85% of the feasibility is made up of three separate areas. Okay? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put in the address. So you put in the address up here. Okay? Okay, and I think we had uh, 56 Highfield Court. Field Court. Okay, Merrimack. So that that knows what we're doing. So the three that uh, the three numbers that we want to predominantly look at is number one, the proposed development. Okay, so it's this section here, the proposed development, and this is mainly focusing on income. So income means when we sell the end product, how much money is coming in the bank, okay? So what this currently reads is that in the house front, there is one house, quantity, it has a four bedroom home, it's 180 square meters in size, and we're gonna sell it for $600,000, okay? And the income here, $600,000. However, what you'll notice here is that house rear, it says that there's four houses being built, three bedroom houses, each 180 square meters, and then we're gonna sell those for 650,000 each, which is 2.6 million. Now, you know, this, this is how you receive it. It'll be pre-filled in, because we wanna make sure that you understand, you see what's happening, okay? So, so let's just say that we're proposing a, a subdivision for this property. Four properties on the back is probably not realistic, but let's put one, and you'll notice a few lights, a few lights and colors change, but we're, we're, we're gonna to come to that soon. So you can see here that we're gonna subdivide, we're gonna build the house at the back for, and we're gonna sell it for 650,000, there's your income. Front house, we're gonna sell for 600,000, okay? Um, so let's actually move back, move down here to the bottom of this particular box that we're looking at. Uh, we've got 24 weeks at negative 190. What does that mean? When I hover over a few of these different boxes, it actually gives me a, a note, a hint of, uh, of what that box actually is. So it says use negative number for payment of rent, positive number if receiving rent. So if you are looking to rent the property whilst you are doing your developments and all that kind of stuff, you obviously would put negative 200 or negative 400 a week. However, if you purchase the property and someone's paying you rent to maybe live in the front property, then you'd put maybe 500 a week. Okay, so let's put that there and that also comes into income. The final stage of this particular box you'll see is sales agent fees of 3%. 3% of the total gross income is there. Is, is there. Um, then we've got less input tax credits, so it's taking out, taking out that kind of component of it. The net income is 1.2 million. Okay, so that's the very first part that we want to focus on when we're filling in a feasibility program. Is the proposed development meaning the income? Income is key to making this transaction work. Okay, so that's how you fill in the income page. The second part that makes up 85%, remember 85% of the entire feasibility process is the developer's hard costs. Now developer hard costs can look like two separate things. Firstly, it can look as a build, or secondly, it can look as a renovation. A build or a renovation, those two separate things. So, at the moment, we remember that the proposed development was that we were having one house in the front and one house in the rear, uh, and they're 180 square meters each. What this developer hard cost area has done is that it asks you for a cost per square meter. We've put 1,100 per square meter, which is fairly accurate, I guess, for, uh, for, for majority of houses at the moment. And then what it's done is it's multiplied $1,100 per square meter by 180 square meters that was, that was in the proposed development section. So if I change the 180 square meters to 200 square meters, you watch here how that number automatically jumped to 220,000, okay? Now in this case, we're, let's just pretend that the front property, we're not building anything, it's actually existing. So what I would do then is I would zero this figure out 
and you'll see the numbers and lights changed again, which is always interesting. But uh, I zeroed that figure out, but we're going to build the back house, and we've actually kept that one in there. Okay. Uh, and then what it's showing now is we're going to look at landscaping. Landscaping is 15,000 roughly. Uh, service easements, let's say 20,000. Double garage, 4,000. It's all fairly, fairly good. Contingency is at 5%. And 5% is generally a, a very generous figure, so to make sure that your numbers are correct. So the developer's hard costs makes up that second number. Now the only number we haven't spoken about is this renovation cost, okay, renovation cost. Now as you can see here, it currently sits at 1,050. Now when you go back to that renovations page, which we showed you earlier, uh, you'll actually notice that everything that you fill in on that page will actually come directly back to this renovation cost page. So I'm going to quickly go to renovations, and uh, let's just you know let's just add a few more things in here. I'm going to you know for easy numbers I, I might add ten thousand dollars down here of just uh, sorry different fixes. Um, so a hundred hundred three thousand dollars that'll be fine. Let's go back to the feasibility, and you can see now it's gone up to four thousand and fifty. So that is your developer's hard cost, and that's how you utilize either the build or the renovation cost two important factors of the developer's hard cost section. And the final section that we want to actually take a look at to ensure that our numbers are correct is this very small box, which is down the right hand corner, and it's the land purchase price. Okay, now all these numbers are not new to you, and the land purchase price actually determines the percentage and the profit of our feasibility. Okay, so I want to show you two things. Firstly, this is where the land purchase price you would input into the system. Secondly, I want you to look at this one here. It says suggested land price based on your input, 640,000. What does that mean? If you were to purchase it for 640,000, you would reach our set profit target of 20%. Now we recommend to everyone to start off at 20% because 20% gives you a bit of leeway. Um, it gives you, it's a very long way to drop if anything were to drastically go wrong. So please leave 20% in, otherwise if you'd like to change it, just click on profit target and then a pop-up box will let you select or, or calculate. You can put in 10%, 5%, whatever it is. But we like to keep it at 20%. So if you watch this here, if I actually type in 640,958, can you see that the possible transaction percentage has actually changed to 20%. However, what if I actually put in that the purchase price was 700,000? All right, now the red, the red bells start to ring. And what you notice, everything in red is uh, a negative. It's probably not a good thing. You want to keep it in the blue. So to keep it in the blue, we actually have to be buying it for that suggested land price to make sure that it's you know, within 20%. Because you see here, we're still in profit. And we're still 13% in profit, $142,000 in profit, which is OK. Though we want, we want you to please keep to that 20%. And this is a calculation made easy for you that will automatically calculate what you need to buy it for at 20%. Uh, so let's just, for simple numbers, put that back in exactly as it says. And all of a sudden, you'll notice that we've actually come back to 20%. Okay, And let's actually clean it up and just put it at 640, just to make it easy for us. Uh, so those are the three numbers that will almost complete your feasibility program. Okay, So it's, it's an amazing form. And uh, there's a few other things on here which I'll mention to you now. Uh, you can have land details, which you can place into this section here. On the right hand side of that section, we've got an options or a time period calculator here. So if you're going to do an option period, how long is the option for? Is it 12 months? Is it 6 months? I'll change it to 12. It's going to take you 6 months to get approvals from council. Uh, it's going to be 6 months for construction. It shouldn't be 6 months. Um, you know, It should be more around the 3 month mark. Uh, and it's going to take you 3 months to mark it. Okay, and RP data can actually give you that marketing. So total, it's going to take you 15 months, which is a very, very long time. Um, so that's, that's an important thing to make sure that you have correct. We have development approval costs, which is all your consultants, your engineers. We've, given, we've actually put figures into this feasibility already, which are generally fairly accurate. And if they're not accurate, they're actually more contingent. So they're actually over in the top. Okay, so if you don't know those numbers, please do your research to make sure that you know them. Otherwise, leave it as it is because there is a lot of contingency, contingency there. Okay, so we're coming down. We've got overhead expenses. Now, this is a big part. We've got stamp duty, 
on land purchase. Now stamp duty is a big expense if you're purchasing land. However, if you're doing some sort of option arrangement and you're not purchasing and you're not planning on, on paying that um, stamp duty because you don't actually purchase the property, what we can do in this feasibility is we can override that stamp duty override and we can press, we can put in zero or we can put in whatever figure we want and it'll actually override that automatic calculation. So it's automatically calculated, okay? Uh, we've got conveyancing, marketing, um, you know, you, if, you're, if you're hiring marketeers, you might need to put a figure in there. Uh, engineering, other consultants, and, and project management. Okay, so we've got a lot of different things here, but at the end of the day, all our uh, summary documents are actually up here at the top. Okay, and uh, at the top it says the gross profit is 249,000, estimated building profit is 29%, which is mainly for the builders, P possible transaction, uh, is 26% profit, calculated gross profit okay, suggested land price based on your inputs, again that 20%, calculated return on cash, 641%. So why is it 641% you're wondering? Uh, so it actually arrives to this final box which is the finance box. So this finance box actually lets you dictate you know, what you're going to put down as a cash deposit what your construction loan interest rate's going to be, what your land interest rate's going to be, what your setup fees are for that particular loan, um, you know, what your option price is, if, if it's refundable or not. So you can actually put that all down here in the finance section uh, of this particular document. So that overall is your feasibility. And what I recommend doing is you just going through having a go. Call the One Life office, ask some of the team members who are very skilled at the feasibility program, if you have any questions or require any support. Otherwise, we look forward to assisting you through this, I guess, property investing journey, utilizing this tool and other tools that One Life have in their toolkit. And if uh, you don't know much about the other tools, please give us a call uh, at the One Life office, like I said, and uh, we look forward to touching base and sharing those tools with you. Thanks.